Hello again. In a previous video, we have seen an, an example of a digital design uh, using Verilog and simulation using the Icarus Verilog software. So in, uh, in that uh, example, we have seen that all we need to start designing with Verilog is a text editor to write the code and uh, the uh, Icarus Verilog simulator and Verilog compiler. Uh, normally, we will execute Icarus Verilog from the terminal, but it can also be uh, uh, convenient to work uh, with uh, with code as it happens with software by using an integrated environment like uh, the popular. Uh, code editors that we have today. So in this video we are going to do some modifications of that previous design and but we will we are using a different tool to um, to manage our project. We will be using a uh, Visual Studio code because it integrates the file manager operation, it also integrates uh, the, the terminal to execute the Icarus very log, and it's also a very nice editor to use, and you probably already use it in, in other projects. Okay? In fact, we are going to use uh, VS Codium, which is one of the uh, distributions of the open source Visual Studio uh, Code software. You, you may know that Visual Studio Code, the uh, open source uh, project, uh, was uh, is, it belongs to Microsoft, and from the open source code, Microsoft produced its own uh, version, which is uh, called Visual Studio Code, simply. Okay. Now, the version distributed by Microsoft is not free software anymore. You have to agree to a license from Microsoft. So in this case, I prefer to use one of the derivatives, which is actually the same program, but keeps a free license, like a Visual Studio Codium. But it's really the same program. And you can use this alternative or the, uh, the Visual Studio Code distributed from, from Microsoft. Okay, so. Once you, you, we are going to open the folder where we have our previous project, it's in the Volter folder. We open it. Okay. So inside our editor, we have the file manager here. We have the uh, Volter design and also the test bench. Okay, so here we can. I have the description of my water circuit and the description of my test bench. The good thing is that we can arrange the files in case we you can edit the the uh, circuit together with the test bench and you can do many things there. So we you can also open the terminal. So you can open a new terminal directly here or better you can go to your folder your project folder and select here open in integrated terminal you select any of the files so you already have a terminal here uh, already working in the directory of your project so you can uh, check that you have the same content that you have in your project. So with this, ha you have integrated everything we had in the previous video, the file manager, the uh, code editor, and the terminal with nice syntax highlighting and everything. Okay. Also, I'm running this in a Linux computer, but because these Visual Studio code is available in many platforms, it's a way to work in an homogeneous way, uh, whatever the, your preferred operating system is. Okay. Note that for having Verilog support in Visual Studio code, you need a package, one of the extensions, which is Verilog HDL. 
it will probably install automatically if you are using the Microsoft branded Visual Studio Code but the, uh, the alternative Visual Studio Codium cannot use the extensions marketplace from Microsoft because of legal reasons. So you can go to the Microsoft marketplace, find a very large HDL extension and download to your system and install manually from here. Okay, you can uh, install from VSIX file here or maybe at the time you see this video the um, a variable extension is already included in the free marketplace that Visual Studio Codium uses okay so we can do exactly what we did before we have our terminal we have our design so we can compile our design with a very lock a voter V and voter TV.V. We can simulate the design BBP A dot out. Okay, we have generated the compiled design, which is the file we have, we have to simulate. And now we have the VCD output file. I don't really know if you can open. Okay, this is the waveform file. I don't really know if you can open. GTK way from here seems you cannot uh, open it directly from here but you can open it from the terminal you just write GTK uh, wave voter uh, db dot bcd okay and if you are running in a Linux system you may want to add a none percent at the end of the of the command line so that when the GTK wave window open, the terminal is executed in the background. So the terminal is free, so you can uh, run uh, the simulation again. Okay, if not, the terminal will be blocked by the um, by the GTK wave window, and you may have to go to, to use another terminal. Okay, once you are here, you add your signals, you zoom, and you check the results. Okay. Okay, that's uh, how you can use an integrated environment like Visual Studio Code. Other uh, programmers, text editors are similar. You also have Atom and uh, Sublime Text. There are, there are different editors that work in a, in a similar way. Okay, now just to do something useful, I also wanted to show you, I will what is this smaller window here? We have access to the waveforms. Okay. Now that we are editing our project again, we can uh, do some changes. For example, Verilog allow you to describe your circuit using different styles. Here we have used the uh, continuous assignment style. So we already know the logic function we assign the output to that logic function in the previous video we had actually to calculate the logic function okay but it's not really needed because we can use a different approach here another very typical approach in Verilog is to use a procedural description so i uh, i i indicate or i describe the operation of my circuit using some process like or similar to what you do when you write software okay so in very lot the you a procedural description has to go into a procedural block the procedural block to uh, describe a circuit is normally the always block so in the always block we basically describe it like this And it means that every time one of these signals changes, this is the sensitivity list for this always block. Anytime one of these signals changes, the block will be evaluated. So you will have the option to describe how, how you want your circuit to behave. Basically, we want to, anytime it's re-evaluated, we want to check if 
uh, inputs are set to one and the output will be one when most of the inputs, when two or more inputs are set to one. The good thing is that inside procedural blocks, you can use procedural statements like the if, like the case, so you can take decisions and, and everything, okay? So in this uh, example, I will use a case statement, for example. So the case statement, you put a variable or a combination of variables. If we want to combine several variables, I can use a construction like this, putting the uh, variables inside the curly braces. Okay. And it means that now it's going to execute or to consider to evaluate different cases corresponding to values of the variables you have put here. Okay, so I just write the value I want to evaluate. So the, the uh, because we are A, B and C are binary numbers, we can use uh, binary syntax for numbers. This syntax is like this one. Okay, it means that when the value of this combination of variables is 0, 0, 0 in binary, this format means my, my number is has three bits and in binary format it is 0, 0, 0. Okay, so this uh, an, a three bits number uh, given as, uh, as a binary number. So in that case, I want V to be equal to 0, right? So this way I can go through all the possible combinations, okay? I can write it here or I can write it uh, here, okay? So in, I, I could go and describe it as in a truth table. I would say in this case V is equal to zero again and then go through all the cases here. These are only eight cases, but it may also be too long. We don't really need to go through all the cases. We can do it in a more compact way. We, for example, we could simply go directly to the cases where the output should be one, which is when we have two ones. Okay. So for example, zero, one, one, then B will be one or uh, another possibility to have two ones will be a one zero one. Okay, so in this case, V will be one again. Or we may also have uh, ones like this one one zero. Okay, so in this case, V one also. And we may also have the three bits set to one. Okay, in this case. B will also be one. The rest of the cases we will have less than two bits set to one, so the B should be zero. We can refer to the rest of the cases in the, in the case statement by using the default keyword. Okay, so the rest of the cases B will be equal to zero, and that's it. Okay, this. This is this is my this could be my description. So we still uh, have to point out some important thing. We really need to put this default uh, case here because if we don't put the default case, when no of these cases uh, are met, what the simulator will do is, is that it will not assign anything to B. Uh, but instead, it will keep the old result. By keeping the old result, we are defining a memory element, some variable that remembers a value. So it's not what the combinational circuit does. So for this design, this description, to be a combinational description, you need to go through all the cases, all the cases when that is one, and all the cases that is zero. Okay, you can be sure you go through all the cases by always including a default section in your case. 
Uh, another important point is that you have to evaluate this uh, process whenever any of the input changes. Okay, so you have to put all the variables that may change into your sensitivity list. If not, then you always you also have something that behaves like a memory that an input may change, but the output may not change, may not be evaluated. Okay, this is not what combinational circuit does. So actually, if you want to be sure that it will be evaluated always as it happening in combinational circuits, you may put an asterisk. Okay, this is will be the standard. A very long description for a combinational circuit using a procedural block. Okay, that way the very uh, software will be sure to evaluate this process whenever any variable in involved in process changes. Okay, this is the right way to describe combinational behavior, and you can use the parentheses or not. Will okay, you can skip the parentheses. Another modification we need is that when you assign a variable inside a procedural block, this variable cannot be of type wire because wire has signals right, that are permanently assigned, okay? Because they connect to blocks or because they are assigned with a continuous assignment, as we did in the previous example. So basically, we also need to change our very output variable to type rec. That should be enough. And to check my circuit, we have not change, uh, changed the inputs and outputs. So we can use the exactly the same test bench we used before. So we, all we have to do is to save our circuit, repeat the uh, command to compile, to compile my, my description, now I see I have an error. So let's go and check it. This is an always the fault. Yes, the problem is that I forgot to put the end, end case. Okay. So let's check again, save, compile again. Now I compile it correctly. VVPA.out to simulate the compiled result. And now we'll, I already have VTK wave open here. So I will not close it, but reload the waveforms as we have seen in the previous video. And you see, we have exactly the same result. Okay? We are describing the same behavior that we did before. From the point of view of the operation, this is exactly the, the same. The good thing about using a procedural description is that normally or, or very often you don't need to do a previous analysis as we did before. We had to calculate the function by hand, then copy the function to very low code. By using a procedural description, we can uh, find uh, ways to describe what our circuit does, even if we don't know the logic function. Okay. Later on, if we use this very log code to implement our circuit in reality, there is software that will do the logic synthesis for us. It will convert our procedural description into a logic function or a connection of gates or whatever it is necessary. Okay. So it's a way to describe in a way easier for humans and then use uh, automatic tools to obtain a circuit without having to do the calculations by your own. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye bye.